here's your friendly domestic terrorists trying to point out that the government isn't following the rules. Excuse me. Lynn Tui with the Associated Press. Are you carrying a weapon? The state would have to prove that. I'm asking you, are you carrying a weapon? The state would have to prove that. I'm intentionally being cagey to point out how arbitrary this is. Explain what that decision is. The decision is a restraining order that uh, uh, prohibits uh, Mr. Jarvis and Mr. Mazingo in as well. I would think that general violence would be very much decreased because everyone could just protect themselves. We would have to rely on that 20 or 30 minutes that it takes to have actual cops come to a scene. So if all of these guns were being used for homicides and suicides, we'd all be dead yeah. if these statistics were true. Uh, Natural law, natural rights. I mean, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. We've never, we're not criminals. We've never been convicted of anything. We don't hurt people. Were you also in law enforcement? I was in the military. In the military. Okay. It's just silly to think that good law abiding people should be disarmed just because they're here. I mean, if I was a criminal, this is where I would come. Why is that? Criminals prey on the. Prey on the weak, you know. If people take their own, sa their own safety and uh, well-being and exercise their natural, statutory and constitutional rights, criminal. I mean, if all good people of the world carried firearms, criminals would be out of business overnight. Yeah. Overnight. And this, it makes me really sad that there's many students here on campus who are now uh, organizing to try to have their own rights taken away by by going and trying to convince the legislature to pass a law. I mean, this isn't about me. I don't even own a gun. This is about you, and this is about your right to protect yourself. Do you have any comments? Any of the comments you stated? Do you have any intentions of arresting these two individuals today? For all they know, I could be carrying a gun right now, and there's nothing they can do to prove it. And that's exactly the point I'm trying to make. Are you investigating these two individuals right now? People under investigation at the moment. They can't make a Terry, a Terry stop and a pat down unless they have a reason. And speaking in uh, generalities and making points that I think are particularly relevant, that anybody, anybody in this crowd, there could be 18 guns in this crowd right now, and we would never know it. Well, we know there's And two. if there were, I'd feel safer because you're all obviously good people who care about this stuff. I would just ask that you talk to some of your fellow students and let them know that you shouldn't ask for your rights to be taken away. That's ridiculous. You can't trust the government to protect you. I mean, this stuff happens every day. A police officer was shot and killed yesterday down at Virginia Tech. The press release that your uh, president sent out was just absolutely ridiculous. I mean, they basically calling us domestic terrorists. I don't even have a parking ticket on my, on my record. I don't kill ants in my house. I take them outside, you know? <laughs> it's, it's silly. It's silly. They, they, they're trying to turn this into something that it's completely not. And why Plymouth the state? Well, I don't know. <laughs> Will you be visiting other campuses? Maybe. We have a we have a court hearing on December 14th in the Grafton Superior Court. 13th. And is it the 13th? It it's 13th. 
I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And maybe the 13th? Everybody should come because if we win this injunction, the entire state regulatory scheme for preventing you from carrying guns will be gone. It should be up to you if you want to protect yourself. Not some bureaucrats that sit on high and I don't know where your administration is, but they're not going to protect you. Do you feel that you're upholding the law today or are you uh, you're in violation of that law? What do you think? Are they in violation of a law? Are they upholding the rule of law? They're wasting a lot of money, that's for sure. I think they're doing what they're told and I think, I think they're doing it uh, out of genuine good intentions. But I think that they should. I think I think they should take some time to think about it. I'm not a cop anymore because I just couldn't enforce victimless crimes. Excuse me, Lynn Tui with the Associated Press. Are you carrying a weapon? The state would have to prove that. I'm asking you. Are you carrying a weapon? The state would have to prove that. I'm intentionally being cagey to point out how arbitrary this is. Any criminal could walk on. Criminals don't care about the law. Criminals don't care about a piece of paper that says you may carry a gun. Criminals go places and they victimize people. Everybody could have a gun. This is New Hampshire. A lot of the people in this community have weapons. The only people who respect fire, silly firearm regulations are law-abiding people who disarm themselves because they're trying to do the right thing and then criminals come and then criminals know that they're disarmed. And why haven't there been more school shootings? I, I don't know how to, how to answer that. I mean, tragedies happen every day. I mean, more people die in car accidents than they do from g firearms every year, and we're not banning cars. <laughs> I also find it particularly interesting that people point out that this is a party school, so we can't have guns here. Hmm. Well, I guarantee you most of the people who party here are doing it illegally, either by using drugs or drinking underage. And possession of a firearm is completely legal, and yet they're using their example that, oh, well, we're breaking the law, so we can't do something that's completely legal. Do you find it ironic that the people that uh, around here that might be worried or turned to are the same people that'll put them in a cage for drinking underage or having marijuana, for instance? Yeah, uh, yeah, I mean, to, to people who are here who think that guns should absolutely not be on campus, I have to wonder when the last time you uh, you smoked pot or drank underage, because the folks here who are protecting you will put you in handcuffs and put you in a cage for doing this stuff. Freedom and liberty is important. Uh, is this ban only on guns, or does it apply to knives too? The state the state preemption law applies to knives, firearms, firearm components, firearm supplies, and ammunition. Have you ever gone to college? Yes. I'm very glad they went and got the court order because I don't think we could have drawn as much attention to this important issue without it. So if they hadn't done that, you would have still come and, and open carried on campus and, and been arrested or, or found in violation of policy and then... Maybe. Well, We're not carrying rifles, I mean, right. so I mean... I'm just trying to find out why. Uh, if that was the, the plan. Well, I mean, we're... We're trying to we're trying to prove a point. We're trying to make stuff known, and if we can win this in court and dismantle this whole thing for the entire state, then we'll have won. You know, we want university students to be empowered to decide about their own safety. Again, I don't own a gun, but I think you should be able to if you want to. That's what this is about. Brad, will you be returning with a gun at any point after this restraining order is? Uh... Maybe, maybe, possibly. We certainly want to promote firearm safety and encourage people to, uh, you know, to attend a firearm safety class that we're going to put on in January. Are you carrying a gun? Could be. <laughs> could be. The state. The state, <laughs> the state would have to prove it. The yes or no question. I realize it. <laughs> we're trying to Can point. Out, we're trying to point out how silly be. this is. Criminals don't care about this stuff. We're not criminals. We're trying to point out that if criminals came here, they're not going to issue a press release. I mean, that's ridiculous. <laughs> we're not announcing that we're coming to do any kind of harm to anybody. That would be silly. That would be absolutely ridiculous. We're actually pretty nice guys if you, know, you get to know us. Please talk to your fellow students who are trying to take your rights away and tell them that you don't want your rights to be taken away. People that might be victims of hate crimes or gay bashing to defend themselves and how they're actually left without defense.
Well, I mean, particularly if, if you're, uh, I mean, lots of people come to college, they're 18 years old, they're new to the world. I mean, it, if, if there's a young lady who comes to school and wants to protect herself, I mean, um, when I was at UNH, I was part of the SHARP program, the uh, Sexual Harassment and Rape Prevention Program. And I mean, there's a lot of sexual assaults that happen on college campuses. And to, to, to say that women shouldn't have the right to defend themselves or sexual minorities shouldn't have the right to defend themselves is just ridiculous. Anyone should have the right to defend themselves. Thank you everybody for taking interest in this, whether you agree with us or not. We just want you to have the right to choose whether or not you want to defend yourself. Thank you for coming to campus without weapons. Thank, Thank you. That you, that you know of. <laughs> for, all you, for, all you know, for all you know, I can have an MP5 on my back. And that's the point we're trying to make. I, I think from a more objective frame, it's, it's way more about equalizing our rights and putting everyone on the same level. Absolutely. Absolutely. There's, no, there's nothing better about anyone wearing a uniform. The two of us used to wear uniforms. Exactly. People wearing, you, it, it's funny, if we were still wearing uniforms, like it would be okay. Okay, we could have a gun, right? But now that we're not wearing a uniform, it's not okay. Well, guess what? The people wearing the uniforms work for the people who don't. At least that's the way it's supposed to be. And in New Hampshire, people have a right to carry guns. This is public property, and no one can tell public members who pay taxes that they can't carry guns. But they're doing it through, uh, you know, through this, this magical court order that it was required that my friend Ian, like, post something on his blog. I mean, this is compelled speech. This is the government saying, you will say this. Do you know that the Supreme Court has ruled time and time again that the police have no obligation to protect anybody? <coughs> there's no duty to protect. It, there, was a, there was a big case where a woman called 911 a bunch of times because she was being raped in D.C. and the police never showed up. She sued and the Supreme Court said, too bad. I don't feel any safer. We're so dangerous. I don't feel any safer. This is our weapon, teaching you about what your rights are. Do you think I have these reaction and statements this let students feel like a different situation was going to be absolutely absolutely nowhere nowhere in her in her statement did she say these two guys who are showing up have no criminal history one was a new hampshire police officer for 11 years the other was honorably discharged from the army we're here trying to point out to you that the government isn't following the rules we are the i mean in this society we are the people and we are supposed to be in charge not them <coughs> all prohibition, not just the uh, prohibition on guns. Oh yeah, I mean, totally. I, when I was a law enforcement officer, I was in an organization called Law Enforcement Against Prohibition, which is something you should all look up, is to end the drug war. Yeah, Woo! Yep. It's to end the war on drugs. Yeah. If your body belongs to you, you should be able to put in it what you want. Mm -hmm. But your body doesn't belong to you because the government will put you in a cold jail cell if you decide to smoke a plant. You're here. Do you think if your people are willing to use uh, law enforcement as a security service because they could bust you for uh, something that is illegal yet uh, harming nobody? Yeah, yeah I mean, the, the police, like if the police only enforce crimes with victims, this world would be a much better place. What happened at Virginia Tech yesterday? We just say something like that couldn't happen here. I would say it would be far less likely to happen here if criminals and predators and people who would hurt people would know that responsible adults here. I mean, let's face it, when you're between 18 and 20 years old, you are a second-class citizen. Because on one hand, the government claims the right to steal you and force you to go fight a war somewhere. But on the other hand, they say, you're not adult enough to have a beer. And then if you do have a beer, they punish you in adult court for something you're not adult enough to do anyway. <laughs> You get it? I mean, there's a bunch of there's a bunch of stuff going on here that that people should be outraged about. And telling you you can't defend yourself, you should be outraged about that. Telling us that it's going to be contempt of court to violate illegal government regulations, everyone should be upset about that because they're not following the law. How do you no. know that gun was registered? It probably wasn't. That's, right. and that's, that's the you, point. You can't prevent people don't commit crimes with registered, registered weapons. weapons. Just don't don't happen. Happen. Look, if we could if we could snap our fingers and uninvent guns, that would be cool. I would do it. No way. But you can't. You need them to feed yourself. Well, you know what I'm saying. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to articulate. If, if like all the badness in the world could be uninvented and like it could be rainbows all the time, that would be great. But the fact is that the, more, more rainbows. Yeah. You know. So. Right. White fluffy bunnies running around everywhere. But the fact is, there are bad people that don't care about the law. Brad, is it true that the university offered you a larger venue to have a debate and a dialogue about these issues no. than you denied? No. That?
They did not. I wonder if we could have more people like inside in a more, you know. I would love to. I would love to debate the campus police chief on the firearms policy. So will you be in contact with the administration, perhaps, to follow up on that um, possibility to have yes. a dialogue and debate where yeah. more people could be present and hear yeah. information? Yeah. Do you think it's yeah, yeah. ironic that a gun ban would be enforced by a group of people with guns? <laughs> yeah, it empowers them. I will just look around and see what people think of that. I mean, people are chuckling. So I'm going to walk around and these guys can wonder if I'm carrying a gun.